that says it doesn't, but it does. And that favoritism is the favoritism against this guy, Anthony. Anthony, for the most part, has been Eric Ten Hag's preferred winger. He's a guy he spent a lot of money on to bring him from Ajax, the team he was managing. So obviously he's going to trust him more. But he's had a lot of stinkers. He hasn't played very well. He hasn't been consistent for us. Yes, he has a good attitude. Yes, he tracks back. Yes, he's a trier. Yes, he's brave. Blah, blah, blah. But he still has stinkers. And he hasn't really justified his price tag. So if you're Jaden Sancho and you're seeing him play in front of you week in, week out, you're not getting any opportunity to impress or to break into the team. And he consistently keeps playing, doesn't get sub, doesn't get really, you know, gets subbed off, of course, but doesn't really come off from the bench, always starts games. It's going to really annoy you to the point where you're going to think, why should I bother in training if this guy's always guaranteed a place in the spot? Then he said other reasons about this guy. And I thought, you know what? The other reasons might have to do with the allegations around this guy's name. And if you've been paying attention on the social media, it's been fucking crazy. So not only do we have to deal with the fucking stuff with Mason Greenwood. Now we have another issue with Anthony. It's now being alleged that Anthony may have physically abused his ex-wife, ex-girlfriend. I'm not sure what the status was before. And it's getting really dark because there's pictures that she's uploaded online of a broken finger. There's pictures that she's uploaded online of bruising. There's been accounts I've read of reports that she had one of her breast implants deflate because of part of the abuse there's been reports said that's not been confirmed that she may have miscarried because of the abuse that she suffered from Anthony allegedly and it's got so deep that Anthony's national team Brazil he's meant to be playing for had decided to drop him because of the ongoing police investigation yes you heard that right the police are investigating Anthony the police are investigating because of why, you ask? Because guess what? The physical abuse took place in the UK. It also took place while he was playing for us. And to make it worse, to make it worse, one of the United doctors, one of the doctors employed at Manchester United to help the players was involved in helping the woman at the time to tend her medical aid. So they're now alleging that the club had knowledge of this incident from when it happened a couple of years ago and they effectively covered it up. And if I'm not mistaken, what I've read so far, that doctor who lended, you know, aid to um, Anthony's ex-wife or girlfriend has now left the club. And some people are alleging it's because of what went down. They were so pissed off that there was no internal investigation. They were so annoyed at what went down that they resigned. So United have actively took part in covering up a player's abuse of a woman. Abuse that led to a supposed broken finger, bruising, a busted um, breast implant, and allegedly a miscarriage. <laughs> My club is in the mud. My club is in the mud. And what's funny about this is that Man United didn't want to make a comment. They were avoiding it. They were trying to ignore it. Didn't want to say nothing. But because it's international week, all the players are off with their international teams. They couldn't ignore it because there's nothing else to talk about. There's only international football. It hasn't started yet. So they have to talk about it. So United have finally addressed it. And they addressed it in the most United way possible. They released an official statement on the Man United site about Anthony and the ongoing investigations. And they used so many words and said nothing. I fucking love it. Right? This is the, this is the full statement. What you're seeing there on the screen, these two bits of what, you know, these two paragraphs, essentially. And they say nothing. The statement. Manchester United acknowledges the allegations made against Anthony and notes the police are conducting inquiries. Pending further information, the club will be making no further comments. As a club, we're taking this matter seriously with consideration of the impact of these allegations subsequent reporting will have on survivors of abuse. So essentially, they've said nothing. Even though there is probably as much information out there about Anthony as there was about Greenwood. But he hasn't been suspended by the club. He's been suspended by his national team, but not by the club. Which to me tells me one thing, glaring one thing. I think my team, I think my team kind of regrets ousting or listening 
or caving into the public pressure around Mason Greenwood, who's now at Getafe on loan. And again, they haven't sacked Mason Greenwood. They've sent him on loan to Getafe. And most likely, if he smashes it over there like he probably will, they'll bring him back to the club, especially under the new ownership. But I feel like the Glazers and the United United hierarchy regretted caving into the fan pressure on Mason Greenwood. So they're going to take a stance of, it's a police investigation, but we're not going to say anything. And they're going to kind of, you know, hold their hands up in the air and pretend it's not happening. That's what I think is going to happen. That's the scary part. That's a that's the scary place we're in as a club, that we're essentially, um, you know, we we'll say enabling, but we're probably, we're standing behind abusers. <laughs> that's how bad we are because they cost a lot of money and because we don't have that many players on the bench that are good to kind of replace them. We're basically standing behind abusers. We're co-signing abusers because we're fucking shit. Can you imagine? Can you fucking imagine? In an ideal world, really, when it comes to sports, maybe this is a bit of a radical point of view on this. There should be a real black and white way to approach things. Either you're a club that says, until a player gets charged, we're not going to take any action on them in terms of the sporting side of things. As long as they turn up on time for training, they do what needs to be done to be a professional of our club, and they play well, we're always going to play them. You have to be in two camps. Either you do that, or you be the camp that has like a moral spine. Or you're like, if a player does something to bring the club into disrepute, they get caught, you know, they, they they get accused of rape by multiple people. They get accused of domestic violence. They beat children, whatever it may be. If it brings the club into disrepute, then we are also out. There has to be one or, you have to sit in one or either the camp. You can't have both or like flip between either approach um, based on the player. You have to either be the the, the club that's, that has a moral spine or that has principles or that has ethics or a code of conduct or you have to be the club that says, police investigation, it's with the police now, but he plays football well, so we're going to play him. But you can't do both at the same time. That's what basically we did. We tried to approach it from the whole police investigation thing away to Greenwood. Then when the fans rioted and went crazy on social media because they didn't want to have an alleged rapist on the pitch, then they suddenly decided to be the principled moral people and say, we can't stand behind the guy. It's absolutely shocking. And I, for one, cannot wait until the Glazers leave my club. Because I think this is the main reason why we're in a situation. Because it just reminds me of being at work. When you're, at, when you're in a job and you have poor leadership, usually it's something that then kind of affects everybody underneath the leaders. It's sort of something that goes, it's a top-down effect. As they say, like, you know, fish r rots from the head or whatever they say, that fucking saying. It honestly does happen. It happens all the time. And I feel like these players, you know, they kind of know Footballers are a little bit immature. They kind of act like children anyway. So it's kind of like high school. It's a little bit like college. They know they can take the piss at United. And there's no real consequences. You get contract extensions. You still go on the fucking club tour. You still take part in all the pitches and shit. You get played. They know there's no consequences. But at top elite teams that want to win things, they have code of conduct. They have co they have a code of ethics, code of conduct, whatever. They have rules. And if you break them, you're out. doesn't matter who you are. So I love, I really want to get to a place where I love my club again. But for now, it's hard to be in love with my club knowing what's fucking going on because I feel like these owners are essentially running us into the mud. And it's kind of sad. I'm not going to lie. It is legitimately, legitimately sad. It makes me so fucking annoyed. But hey, um, what can you do? What can you do?